Well, let's talk history. Now, first off, this is an optional video. We're going to talk about where it came from, all the different versions. You know what? You may not need to know this right now. If you're just getting started with SQL Server, I would skip this video if I were you. I'd just say click and I'd close it. Okay, now I'm assuming at this point you are actually interested in this. So let's go ahead and talk about where it came from. Well, this all started back in the 80s. Now, think back to the 80s in Microsoft. Now understand at this point Microsoft was a pretty large company. They had over 11, 1100 employees, they had 200 million dollars in sales. Mostly they were doing desktop software, MS-DOS operating system, right? They were not a small company. There was another company at the time called Ashton Tate. And Ashton Tate were the writers of the popular DBase software. This was probably at the time the biggest database server, database, biggest database company out there. There was also another upstart called Sybase. Now today we all probably know of Sybase or you probably have heard of Sybase. They back then though were a pretty new company and they had a new product called Data Server. All right, so Microsoft looked around and said, you know what, we don't have a database product. What we could do, we could spend two years going and building our own, or why don't we come up with a couple of clever licensing deals? And they chose the latter. You know how Microsoft is with their licensing and marketing deals, right? So here's what they did. It was pretty clever at the time. They went to Sybase. They said, look, let us license your code and let us put our name on it. Sybase agreed. They went to Ashton Tate and said, hey, we want your name on the product because you're recognized as the market leader. So Ashton Tate said, okay. And so the actual product that came out was called Ashton Tate slash Microsoft SQL Server, came out version 1.0 in May of 1989. And it was really Sybase 3. Point whatever the version was. I, I don't remember at the time now. But it was a pretty clever marketing strategy. It was a win-win for Sybase because Sybase got their name known. They got into more locations. Uh, I don't know so much about the Ashton Tate part because the next version or major update, 1.1, came out not too long from then. And the Ashton Tate part was gone. So it couldn't have been that successful for Ashton Tate and Microsoft. But what was interesting about version 1.1 was that this was for the new Windows 3.0. Now, fast forward to the next release. The next release, surprisingly, was not version 2 or version 3. It was version 4.2. Kind of a, a little quirk, I think, in the release cycle. There was no 2x or 3x. What originally, if you'll remember, version 1.0 of the Ashton Tate Microsoft SQL Server came out in 1989. Okay. At that time, though, it was really based on Sybase 3.0. X. I can't remember what, it, what the number was, right? But so now in 1990, there's Sybase 4.2. So Microsoft said, well, let's just keep this in sync with the Sybase. And that's where the 4.2 came from. So this was actually released in the 16-bit version for OS 2 in 1992. It was the following year that Microsoft came out with Windows NT. And then that was a 32-bit release of 4.2. So it was kind of odd that in 1992 they came out with 4.2, but then they re-released 4.2 in 1993. And it was just simply so that they could port it from OS2 to Windows. So they decided no 16-bit for Windows. We're going full-on 32-bit. Okay. Looking now at how that relationship with Sybase worked. The way that Microsoft and Sybase structured the deal was that Microsoft could really only slap their name on it and add a few things here or there. Everything else had to go through Sybase. So you had to get write-off for any change that you wanted to add into Microsoft SQL Server from the Sybase. So they decided, you know what, Microsoft said to themselves, they said, you know, we're big enough now that we've got enough customers, we can take this and we can't afford now to spend two years writing our own code base. So we're going to do that. And Sybase said, you know what, go for it. We've gotten enough out of this deal. We're a big enough company now. So we're going with it. So they split in 1994. 
Now the next spring they came out, Microsoft came out with SQL Server 6.0. Okay, we skipped five. We just went straight from 4.2 to 6.0. Now this was also called SQL 95 to coincide with the Windows 95, right? So this brought in replication. And by this point in the timeline, Microsoft was one of the big guys in the database world. Obviously, they didn't have the market share, but they were one of the top database platforms that are out there. And you notice Ashton Tate, uh, not really on this list here. Kind of strange. They were still there. Okay, 1996, SQL Server 6.5. So sort of a, uh, not a huge release here. Uh, this was, a, I think, from the time that SQL 95 dropped to SQL 6.5 betas was like eight months, 10 months. It was less than a year. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was super short. And I since read that the problem was there was a lot of pressure from Oracle, from Sybase, and from other companies that were releasing databases with new features, and Microsoft didn't want to be left behind. And they knew, here, here's another thing, they knew they were in the middle of rewriting all of their code for the next version, what we're going to see here on the next slide. So they went ahead and did, I don't want to call it an interim release, because there were some pretty big features released in 6.5, but it was a very short release cycle. Uh, the, probably the biggest, most important feature of 6.5 was that it's ANSI standard compliant now. This is the first version of SQL Server that was ANSI standard, okay? or it was at least compliant with the entry-level ANSI standards. Uh, but I, just so you know, this is still built on the old Sybase code. They didn't need write-off permission anymore, but this is still primarily old Sybase code going forward. Notice that we go from 1996 to 1998. So we have a what I would consider a normal release cycle here, about two years. What happens now? Microsoft breaks down that old Sybase code and rewrites everything from scratch. So no more Sybase. Windows uh, SQL Server 7.0 is fresh Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, a lot of people really considered it SQL Server version 1.0 because it was like starting fresh, right? It was just all completely handwritten from scratch. Now, the language is still Transact SQL. All right? We haven't really covered this here, uh, but with Transact SQL, let me just show you here. With Transact SQL, this was the language of Sybase and of the original SQL Server. So there was Transact SQL for Sybase, Transact SQL for Microsoft SQL Server. When they split in 1994, neither of them changed that name. So today it's still Transact SQL for Microsoft, Transact SQL for Sybase. They are similar, but they're not quite the same. So when I say up here that it starts to fork, that means that now there's, you know, things in the Sybase version that aren't in the Microsoft version. It, it's now very prominent. Okay. There are a lot of new features here in SQL Server 7.0. Data Transformation Services, or DTS, as I so happily remember. Love DTS. You could make a lot of money back in the 90s with DTS and transferring data. And, oh, that was a, oh, that was just a lot of money to be made in the consulting arena. Uh, OLAP services down here. For those of you today that deal with data warehouses, uh, work with maybe SQL Server analysis services, it was actually called OLAP services back in the day. 